Okay, hi. Hi, hi. Ashley. This is my very first attempt at uh, recording um, a, a video call um, at the very start of our um, Candida and Leaky Gut Awareness campaign. So I'd just like to introduce you to everyone. Hi everyone, this is Ashley. Hi. Ashley and I met last week for the first time um, on Skype. Do you want to tell them how you came to find me? I, we have a mutual friend who had been on the retreat and who is looking rather fabulous and I had noticed her pictures on Facebook and whatever and just sort of dug a little bit deeper because um, everybody loves good Facebook snips. So I was looking at how fabulous she looked and then stumbled across the videos that Lilia has done on YouTube and was kind of just at an all-time low with my health and just all around feeling a bit crap. So I contacted you. So, and I'm so happy that you did. So am I. Um, so what happened was when um, I met Ashley, she called in her nutrition evaluation and the first thing I noticed was the massive amount of antibiotics that she had and that the symptoms that she was experiencing were all synonymous with candida, out of control candida. So once I explained this to um, Ashley, she it seemed to resonate with us pretty much straight away, didn't it? Yeah. Um, you did something that most people don't do, you just decided to grab the bull by the horn and yep. make the change. So yep. there, of course it's a two part thing, isn't it? You have to eliminate sugars and grains from the diet, which can be a bit of a challenge and um, and then you have to put in some herbs and supplements to help you. But obviously the main problem for people um, on the elimination diet is cutting out the grains and the sugar. So do you want to tell us a little bit about how you dealt with that? Well, first of all, tell us a little bit about your detox symptoms, because that's, that, that can be quite a, a ride too. <laughs> so if you you are, oh, since I started? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, God, I, do you know what, my brain, I have to say, one of the biggest things has been my memory the past seven days, I have been so forgetful, mm -hmm. like, short-term memory has been shockingly bad, which is not ideal in my job, um, so it's been interesting, uh, so thinking back, uh, it started, we had our first session on Friday, so this is day, this is day five and a half, I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Friday night, um, we had a friend over, my fiance and I, and ordered a Chinese. So, <laughs> thanks for the support. <laughs> so, I didn't have a Chinese or any wine, um, and it was just kind of, I went into this so headstrong because once I read up on it and the word cancer was mentioned, I was, that was really sort of scared me. Um, so I, I am determined, which is why I think from the start there was no negotiation. So even when they're sitting eating Chinese in front of me, I've, I've been okay. Mm -hmm. um, slept okay Friday night, slept okay Saturday night. I think it was Sunday night. I did not sleep a wink, did not sleep at all. Um, also drinking massive amounts of water, so peeing constantly, <laughs> um, which has been fun and sponsored by Andrex. And yesterday, last night I messaged you to say, yesterday I messaged you to say I slept brilliantly mm -hmm. on Monday night. Last night I got a full 10 hours, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I feel because I'm really believing that I'm healing, mm -hmm. that has been the main thing for me um, that has really hit stopped the cravings as such. I'd still love a bar of galaxy, mind you. Mm -hmm. But you came up with a solution for your little cold trip. I did. Tell us about and that. it's definitely not for everyone. But <laughs> I, um, I'd asked you if I could have raw cacao, which I had in the cupboard, um, organic, raw, the purest form. Mm -hmm. I tried it with the nibs. Don't go there. It's horrendous. <laughs> um, so it, it has to be in the powder form. And I... I think the first night I put too much in, so it was super bitter, but I just mixed it with some pure almond mm -hmm. milk, mm -hmm. the unsweetened version, 
because I, when you read, actually, you can just pick the almond one off the shelf, and when you read the back, you learn lots of sugar in it. So you think you're buying something healthy, as always, but no, loaded with sugar. So make sure you get the unsweetened one. And so a little last night was a better one because I only put half a teaspoonful in. And I, as I said to you, I think it's the process. Mm-hmm. It smells like chocolate. It's like making hot chocolate. It's the same texture you're whisking and everything. So yeah, half a teaspoonful, some nut milk. It's really bitter, mm-hmm. but it cures your chocolate craving. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And that's, I think, what we need to do is we need to find other things that we can have, we can drink, and we can eat, and we can snack on yep. that are not going to feed um, the yeast, that, that it's going to starve it. So yep. no, that's fantastic. And I have to take my hat off to you. You've been doing it incredibly well. Um, and can you just tell us a little bit about all the symptoms that you had and particularly about how many antibiotics you've had. How long have you got? <laughs> I was diagnosed with asthma, chronic asthma, at the age of three, um, triggered by a horse. So I ended up over um, the next seven years of my life, I spent in total just over a year in hospital. Um, so I was caught with my mom. I, a lot of it's quite hazy to me, obviously, because I was only little. Um, so I asked my mum the other day um, how many courses of antibiotics she thinks I've had over my life. Now, I, I obviously remember the last maybe 20 years, but prior to that, I don't. She said, it, you're, you're in the triple figures. Mm-hmm. She's like, easily triple, triple figures. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was always getting chest infections. Anytime I got a cold, I got a chest infection. Antibiotics and steroids as well. I was on a lot of steroids as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I got glandular fever when I was 14, more antibiotics. Um, then I turned, I was told 15, 16, started getting really severe urine infections, which at the time was actually very embarrassing. I was not sexually active, I want to say that first, because that's the first thing everybody's like, mm-hmm. oh, you got cystitis. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that, and that was, it made me embarrassed about it because everybody obviously thought that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, my mum thought it, mm-hmm. which was also <laughs> uncomfortable. Um, so I got a, I started having that when I was about 16 until I was, well, until recently. I did have a two-year break of it. Don't know why. It went into remission for two years. Mm-hmm. But I would say I was having cystitis every four weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was I, I actually... A memory of it is, uh, I remember, my a, I did drama for A-level, and I remember um, just before I was about to go out and do my performance, I took it, and my drama teacher had to run out to the chemist and get me the little sodium citrate sachet, mm-hmm. which I, I couldn't go anywhere without. Yeah. Um, then, when I was 21, the cold sores started, so constant cold sores. Um, I think I've probably been on 20, 30 courses of the Cyclovir tablet. Um, then two years ago, um, acid reflux, really, really bad reflux. Um, again, the doctor gave me some omeprazole tablet to take. So every time I want to have a glass of red wine, you know, taking the tablets. Um, and I read up on, on, on that and sort of kept going back to the doctor and saying, like, I don't really know if you should be looking into this because acid reflux is so bad for your your pipes and everything. No, no, just keep taking the tablets. It's fine, it's fine. So he was reassuring me. Um, weight gain started three years ago. Mm-hmm. No matter what I exercising, fiance into gym, so exercising, just not, I thought I was eating better, but not before three years. Um, before three years ago, I would say, the weight would have fallen off me if I if I just eaten right for a week or two. And I know getting older, you know, yeah, but you're not that old. It, <laughs> it all slows down, but just uh, just a lot of a lot of weight on my middle. Mm-hmm. Really tired. Um, just really unhappy. Had a really really bad urine infection in February this past, which lasted eight weeks, and I had three courses of antibiotics for it. Um, the worst, the final third one, starting on a Friday afternoon, and me sitting on the toilet, uh, phoning my GP, screaming down the, <laughs> screaming down the phone, begging him 
to help me. Um, really lethargic, no sex drive, um, just all round feeling crap. So went to the doctor, sat down in front of him and said, I feel like a hypochondriac. I'm here all the time. My allergies, sorry, it's another thing. Always had really bad allergies, always sneezing. So I sneeze at like 8 o'clock every morning at least five times. Um, so I sat down in front of the doctor, told him I was hypochondriac, he needed to do something. And I decided at that point it was my thyroid. So I asked him to do a test on my mm-hmm. thyroid. Blood test came back fine, which I was devastated about because at that point... Yeah, you're looking for something. Just say it's my thyroid and then you can give me some tablets, more tablets. Yeah. That came back negative and he told me I was depressed. And I said, I have nothing to be depressed about. My my life is exactly what I wanted. This is where I've always wanted my life to be and I've got it. I have no no reason to be depressed. Oh, but you know that he said to me, but that that's that's what depression is when you're you're really down and you just can't find a reason for it 